YouTube has changed. It's no longer about views, subscribers, or clicking the bell icon to get notified of every upload. It's an endless series of proxy battles found by mercenaries and Russian dislike bots. I remember a time where feminine sounding men would slide down ramps in CSGO, talking about the most cringe thing on the internet. And even before that, how you could warp Half-Life characters' faces to look like malnourished children, and everyone laughed. But now, everything has a price. ID tag YouTubers have ID tag YouTube videos. So using Clip Converter to download their content to make fun of them is all but impossible. Nano machines inside their bodies enhance and regulate their abilities. Genetic control, information control, emotion control, battlefield control. Everything is monitored and kept under control. YouTube has changed. The age of deterrence has become the age of control, all in the name of averting catastrophe from weapons of mass destruction. And he who controls the one out of 10 performing video on the YouTube studio controls history. I've been deployed to spy on one of these YouTubers and to see if I can learn anything to bring back to Mother Base. Liza Koshi, codenamed Golden Girl. <laughs> Rose to fame, make <laughs> I, I, I'm sorry. I I can't do I can't do the voice anymore. I, I I was gonna get David Hayter to do the rest, but he turned down the cameo. This can't be happening. Also, YouTube has a glitch that randomly unsubscribes people. So please check that you subscribed, and if you haven't already, consider it. Liza started her career in 2013 on Vine, the app where each video was six seconds long, and whoever could shout the loudest was usually the most successful. <laughs> Liza would do variations of already famous vines and put a spin on them. Like, for example, we've all seen white people be like, but what if Indian people be like? How white people knock? Hey, I'm here! How Indian people knock? Hello, hello, I'm here, I have spices! Sorry, boy! But Liza was clever. She knew that Vine had a short lifespan and evacuated on the last shuttle to the promised land of YouTube, where she did a series uploading her daily life every Wednesday. Wait, Liza? Is that you? Shortly after kickstarting a second channel with even more relaxed content. Like, for example, interviewing former President Barack Obama. Again, very relaxed content. Her networking got her into many future roles like Tyler Perry's horror comedy, Boo, and Medea Halloween. You didn't stop talking. Also, I'm incredibly jealous that she shared a film with Huel from Breaking Bad. <laughs> Honestly, I want to shove my cock in your ear and like... <laughs> also appearing in one of the first successful YouTube originals, Escape the Night, the longest running YouTube premium show with over 40 episodes. It's shot like a sitcom a la Modern Family with all the most marketable YouTubers at the time. <coughs> I just love the irony that Shane Dawson is in it and he's given the title of Renegade. I think one of her most accidentally hilarious roles was when she was in 2015's Freakish, where a strange mist descends on a school and the survivors have to band together. Don't. <laughs> Gee, I, 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 I wonder where they heard that one before. It's hilarious because you're asking someone known for making the funny faces to act seriously. There's a saying that people known for comedy can never be in serious roles. And you know, I think that's a massive cope. Cope. Even funny man Will Ferrell has done some serious roles, like Stranger Than Fiction, a 2006 film where he plays a man knowing that he's going to die because his life is controlled by someone writing his story. You will die. You will absolutely die. Even if you avoid this death, another will find you. And I guarantee that it won't be nearly as poetic or meaningful that's what she's written. Liza has moved on to bigger things, not just starring, but producing her very own show, Liza On Demand, where she plays herself, but the surname is different. The main premise is she has to do a bunch of odd jobs for the app Task It, with the hopes that she gets the rank of elite tasker. Kind of like when an Uber driver gets five stars, so you trust him just a little bit more. No! I'm back! Liza is joined by co-stars Harlow, played by Kamiko Glenn, who voiced Penny Parker in the 24 FPS Spider-Man film. 
and Oliver, played by Travis Coles. Oliver being unironically actually funny, and I wish he got his own show instead. I covered seasons one and two on my channel already, but that was well over a year ago, hence all the exposition I had to give in the opening. There's lore to this show, and I must respect it. But now, I present to you, somehow through hedge funds and pyramid schemes, Liza On Demand, season three, The Revenge of the Sith. <laughs> The first episode opens with Liza telling Oliver that she's going to see a family friend to hopefully get a real job to impress her family. Finally, someone that agrees YouTube isn't a real job. My mom wants me to meet up with a family friend who's president of my college alumni association. Something about getting a real job. She then goes to drive to the meeting, realizing she's been blocked in. Only as soon as she's one foot away from the car. Wow, that, uh, that depth perception is terrible. Liza then finds Don, the apartment landlord played by Jim O'Hare, most known for being in parks and recreation. Baba boy. Okay, so now you're sure that everything is okay, you know, down there? You're perfectly healthy. That man has the largest penis I have ever seen. She explains to him that her car's locked in and she's gonna miss her meeting. It's fine. Anyway, I'm sorry, but I can't move it. I mean, literally, I had to have a toad in here <laughs> because this is a historically significant artifact. Oh. Oh, wow, it's an old car. An actual decent joke, which is then inevitably ruined moments later. I'm not really a car person. Wait, is this the car from Back to the Future? Oh, no, I'm not really a movie person either. References for the sake of it put this show on the same level as Big Bang Theory. You will have to deal with her in time. I really see why they needed that laughter track now. My mom died. <laughs> this episode is all about conspiracy theories, and Dom tells Liza that the year 2000 didn't even happen, which she'll inevitably believe herself and shield to strangers for wacky hijinks. The truth is, no such thing as the year 2000. Oh, this is one of those um conspiracy group thingies, like the Flat Earthers or the Anti-Vaxxers. No, no, it's nothing like that. No, those people are crazy. They ignore basic facts and science. No, no, no. Now, this is actually a good setup for a gag. <laughs> you can tell Dom is an actual actor with acting experience because he himself is so sure about what he's saying is real while still saying that other conspiracies are complete nonsense. And some said, Omega, we come in peace. And others said, How to become a Sigma male, the rarest type of them all. Eh, bullshit. The True Thousanders, they are under something very, very real. On the Parasynical channel, we stand Don. Don has this car because he claims that even though it was made in the year 2000, it was actually made in 1999 because the year 2000 never existed, which prompts fellow conspiracy theorists to show up and one man to recreate the Wojak in real life. Now, remember when Liza was apprehensive about this theory? Like the Flat Earthers or the Anti-Vaxxers. Not even 25 seconds later, she's fully bought into the conspiracy and starts shilling it to her friends. No slow turn of events or something that makes her change her worldview. I mean, you know, come on. Each episode is about 20 minutes, so we got to make it efficient here. But I was thinking about it, and I actually can't remember a thing from the year 2000. Which is kind of weird, right? Because you were five. How could you remember anything? Meanwhile, in the B story in this episode, Harlow goes on a date with a guy called Casey, who's so perfect, he listens to Tame Impala. Hey, uh, I remember you said you liked Tame Impala, so I got us both tickets for August. I hope that's okay. It's more than okay. I just always remember listening to Tame Impala with Death Grips overlaid, so yeah, it's a, it's a decent music choice. Casey is actually so wholesome, he donates his five damage resistance hoodie with poison protection. But then he shows his true colors all in the span of about 15 seconds. Oh, um, Casey, it's the blanket. <laughs> wow, I got way too excited to get you back to my place. <laughs> yes, you did. <laughs> oh, fuck. One thing I love here is how they purposely put a bin into frame just to exaggerate how much of a piece of shit he is. She shares this with Liza, who seems to brush it aside, bringing the story back to the conspiracy plot where they make weird 9-11 jokes because a bad film came out at the same time. You know, the deeper you go, the weirder it gets. Like the 2000 Olympics that were supposed to have taken place in Sydney. Careful, Liza, you're starting to sound like Mariah Carey. Honestly, if there's any year she should deny, it's 2001. That's the year Glitter came out. 
And that was the worst thing that happened September of 2001. I looked up that film, by the way. I don't think I've seen a worse score on IMDb from such a huge amount of people. I'm looking at the Wikipedia page as well. Carrie's performance as an actress was considered by many to be amateur. I don't care what my face. I mean, I'm sure it can't be that bad. Well, what do you mean? I thought you were supposed to keep track of people. It's an imperfect system, Miss Frank. Records are destroyed, people disappear. Look, um... I, I have all your information and, um... Ah, oh, right, uh, never mind. Back at the house, and Oliver didn't get into the team he thought he did a senior year with and realizes that all the money he's been spending hasn't even gone anywhere. <gasps> I did a DWD walkathon. My grandparents sponsored me by the mile. Oh my god, I still donate annually. Who am I giving my money to? Oh my god, I need to know how deep this goes. Liza finally attends one of the conspiracy theory meetings to point out how they're all insane. And this joke is actually kind of funny. She shows off a calendar made in the year 2000, which disproves the year 2000 not existing. But then she's asked to look at the year it was made. Liza, sweet, innocent, vertically challenged Liza. Do me a favor and take a look at the copyright date on the calendar. Okay, um, copyright in... 1999. Boom! <laughs> Whoa! So this wasn't actually made in the year 2000. It's funny because I kind of saw this as a meta joke, referring to how incompetent Liza's character is and the universe that she's in. That people would be so stupid and also all agree on something, which is such common knowledge. Not being dumb for the sake of it, but showing her flawed character and that she's just a walking punchline. This subtlety is quickly <laughs> ruined by her then explaining the entire joke. Wait, but don't all calendars have to be made the year before? Uh, well, sure. Now they do. <laughs> She's adorable, isn't she? Oh. Meanwhile, with the B story, Harlow's date throws even more trash out in public, and when she finally confronts him about it, he has a extremely strange cope. What else am I supposed to do? Throw it in a trash can where a giant truck spewing carbon emissions throws it away? Then takes it to a landfill that's poisoning our planet to the core? I... Babe, thought you wanted to go paleo. Nothing would ever change. Nothing new could ever be expected. It had to end. My power more. Yeah, just, just show him that episode in Futurama where they had to shoot the trash ball into space and how it was going to fall back to Earth and kill everyone. I'm, I'm sure that'll change his moral compass. Liza, back at her house, finally gives in to the conspiracy theories, creating her own montage with top text, bottom text, impact font, and ends the scene with probably one of the worst one-liners yet. Wait till they see this on Reddit. She eventually goes to a meeting for a new job, and we see some of that classic Vine Liza, as in le, le random sound equals funny. So, Liza, your mom tells me you're looking to make a career switch. Well, I don't really have a career to switch from. Uh, looking for more of a career birth, like a... <laughs> Congratulations! It's a career! I purposely paused on this frame. So you feel the secondhand embarrassment I am. I would also like to do a montage of every time Liza does a quirky facial gesture in this scene alone. That's ridiculous. It's just so exaggerated. This scene actually shows how season three seems to have the biggest identity crisis so far. Even the plot isn't consistent. With season one's conclusion, Liza did get her elite status, and season two then resetting it for no real reason, making the entire build up to season one completely pointless. And now Liza is just a 20 something trying to get a job. Holy shit! I'm not saying the show had to be about the Tasket app, but it was a good foundation. Why not have season three be about her competition being a rival Tasket? Brand, like, I don't know, like you've got Uber and Lyft. Also, Liza's entire conspiracy about the year 2000 not being real is shattered once she showed a picture of her from the year 2000. I, I want to say as well, this would prove literally nothing as she was too young to remember this year, but I, I guess we needed to kind of solve this plot thread before it got any deeper. You know, God forbid we have any of these episodes be not self-contained. Wait till they see this on Reddit. <laughs> that doesn't prove anything. Liza, you're in the picture. Right there, see? Next to your mom and dad. Your parents gave me that frame as a gift. 
That's me. Liza, how could you have ever believed such nonsense? <laughs> we cut back to Harlow for a date. For a third time, he does the funny litter thing, but to make it different, he actually dumps Harlow. Like last night, you flossed after you brush your teeth. Everyone knows you floss before you brush your teeth. You have to get all the little pieces of food out before you... Yeah, that's why I haven't kissed you all day. <laughs> I can't be with someone who's such a mess of a person. And then the conspiracy meeting people suddenly realize all their claims are baseless and only used to distract themselves from embarrassing things they did. You're right. That's exactly what I've been doing. I invested all my money in... It was easier to pretend that it never happened than deal with my own stupid mistake. Wow, what, what an organic way to wrap up the episode. That didn't feel rushed at all. No need for a part two, I guess. <laughs> Episode 2 begins with some aerial shots of LA, which I like to call urban decay with a Snapchat filter, and also filming complete strangers. I mean, I think they are, because you can see the pure bewilderment on this guy's face looking into the camera. Liza and Oliver are talking about how they've moved to a new apartment. Amelie, your keeper, where is it? We're right by the beach. I assume the lease on the previous set expired. Liza on demand, season one and two apartment. I'll miss you. We've had so many good times. Like when the um the thing with yeah the 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 thing that happened. So something happened, I'm sure. Liza then starts criticizing LA culture for how weird and extrovert everyone is. Their breakfast burritos have heirloom tomato salsa. They're West Side burritos. There's constant volleyball going on. I saw a woman wearing a snake. Now the clients over here are just. Different. Different how? It's a vibe, Oliver. You wouldn't understand. This would be a good joke. You know, I love attacking LA culture as much as anyone. Think about it. LA is actually so bad that it made Jake Paul move out. <laughs> and definitely not because they raised taxes for the rich people. I can't stand being in this ugly apartment with all of its fresh air and natural light. I actually can't tell if the show is trying to mess with me or not anymore. The way she said natural lighting in a sarcastic way, like there's no natural lighting and it's all just studio lighting. I think I'm trying to cope so badly to give her a pass that I'm trying to like find much deeper meanings in these jokes. The new set also must have done something with the script because Liza is back working at Tasket again for some reason. She goes to the beach to meet someone for a gig and if Bizarre Thought Patterns were a show, it'd be this. The thing is, I was gonna propose to my girlfriend, you know, romantic proposal at the beach. Yeah. But uh, kinda dropped the ring. <laughs> I know, keep your stubby finger dolt. <laughs> Sound like my old harp teacher. <laughs> anyway, I really need to find that ring so I can uh, get her back here and propose. I do appreciate the wind machine they use to simulate wind though. Like, I'll, you know what? One gold star, out, you know, one and a half gold star out of three. I'm feeling generous today. Actually, wait, th this was filmed on an actual beach? Not a green screen? Oh my God, they, you can't tell what's real and what isn't anymore. There's actually a pretty funny side gag here with Harlow being asked by a family to take a picture for them. And Harlow joins in not having any idea how to take a picture apart from the selfie feature. I actually like this joke. It shows how Harlow e-celebs are perceived in general. And again, an actual good gag that Liza has no part in. Ready? Oh, uh, uh, sorry. We just wanted a picture of the four of us. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, okay. How do I do that? Oh, maybe, you know, flip the camera. Liza's gig host turns out to be a complete apologist, trying to find the ring to propose to her girlfriend, but defending the fact that she walks all over him and cheated on him multiple times. Him and I had our disagreements just like any other couple. <laughs> she always complained about the way I dressed and she really hated my heart playing. <laughs> also, she slept with my brother. But it was a one-time thing. This actually gets so bad that Liza becomes the moral compass of this episode. I know that is a really hard pill to swallow. And she teaches him that he's in an incredibly toxic relationship. I think it's good. I think it's a Hey, I keep... I know this is none of my business, but... This doesn't sound like the healthiest relationship. But unfortunately, this advice falls on deaf ears because this man is pussy whipped. <laughs> Boss. Only to then change his mind 15 seconds later as Liza finds the ring and then dumps his girlfriend and instead proposes to Liza. Now I know why you said all that stuff about Miriam. You were right. I need to find someone who shares my interests and loves me the way I am. Yes, Keith. So stupid, Liza. It was you all along and 
you were just trying to tell me. Liza, will you marry me? Yeah, I like the Walter White tier arc they went through here. You know, you've got the rise, the fame, the money, and the eventual descent into everything falling apart. Can we just take that uh, 10 out of 10 Ozymandias has on IMDb? Uh, I, I just give it to this episode, please. The story then concludes with Oliver eventually finding his own people on the gay beach. The funny thing is about this scene, in the original cut, it didn't have any kind of music. Call now and you'll get the smart mop for just $20. And shows as simple as this need that music to give some kind of stimulation. Unfortunately, he finds out the gay beach is filled with people that he already knows, so there's no fresh meat. Oliver! Hey! You're kidding. I do rate the guy with the deus ex glasses in the crowd. Jensen, you cost me my job! Yeah, rip. Prepare yourselves for the arrival. Hee <laughs> hee, I just love using my phone to watch YouTube videos and nothing else. What the hell was that? What the f what, what was that for? You were misusing your phone like humans only use 10% of their brain. You were barely scraping the surface of your phone's true potential. Yeah, I I'm pretty sure that's a myth. And wh why do you look like the guy from the main? I have no idea what you're speaking of, Mr. E <coughs> I am clearly a transformative and royalty-free character. Now, I must inquire. Have you heard of Mech Arena? No. Mech Arena is a free-to-play game that can be downloaded on iOS and Android for free. Yeah, that's great. You know, if only I had a phone to actually play it on, you know, before you smash mine. Well, you see, our time on this earth is limited. That's why Mech Arena games can be completed in just a few minutes. Xbox be players be like, ah, oh, GG. Without having to sink loads of time into a single game. That's it? That doesn't even make any sense. You, you told me this after you threw my phone. Shut up, moron. I'm too busy simping over the amazing mech designs like Panther, who can put down invincible walls, or Killshot, who's the fastest mech in the game. I, uh, can, I, can I borrow your phone? I, I, I need to call my wife and make sure she's okay. No, I don't think I will. I'm too busy with my 12 unique pilots to choose from and customize. On top of that, there's season two of the Battle Pass. That's a lot of content. Two new 2v2 deathmatch maps and holiday events. I also heard that Mech Arena raised $100,000 for the Mechs Are Here charity event. How generous. 100k for charity? Wow, they, they really are generous people. I, I, I might download the game now. Use my personal QR code to get 50k credits, three gold crates, and one exclusive heraldic mech skin. It's super epic. Also, you can add me in game. Oh my god, a whole one mech. I, I, I'm gonna do that right now. Ha ha. Of course you would, because you see the opportunity, so to speak. Until we meet again, Mr. Sigma. Wow. What a nice, friendly guy. Episode 3 begins with a totally different setting. I mean, the set is the same and the characters are the same, but the direction is totally different. Emulating Modern Family's mockumentary style with sweeping and handheld shots. And honestly, I do prefer this more. It feels much more inclusive and hands-on compared to the static shots of previous episodes. But this isn't the first time the show has tried a different angle, like how the latter part of season two tried a laughter track. The show seems to be attempting different things each episode with uh, varying success. Claudine, look what I tracked down at the antique store. Oh, Liza, that's wonderful news! We also cut to the cast talking one-to-one -one with the cameraman about their daily life. Like Oliver talking about how he bought a hat just because he saw Jason Momoa wear it. My rules of shopping basically boil down to WWJMD. What would Jason Momoa do? <laughs> and considering that this episode is so vastly different from the rest, I'll be doing face cam for this episode and this episode only with uh, this beautiful hat. Oh my God, I look like a woman. <laughs> Damn drink. Liza then busts in to talk about a possible date that's been ignoring her. Ignoring her as in he's just been working his normal nine to five and ignoring her troll face impression. He still didn't notice me. Who? This guy who's always in the coffee shop at the same time as I am. Guys, he's like if Harry Styles and a mini cupcake had a baby. He's so cute. Plus, we have so much in common. Like, 
Okay, we both have laptops. We both drink coffee. It's crazy, right? <laughs> Check out this vision board I made up our future life together. Um, maybe it needs... Now, this joke, th this is a good one, all right? Firstly, because of how delusional Liza is, but also the effort put into that whiteboard gag that we will never see again. Honestly, I can't hate on this joke. It shows how hyper-obsessed Liza is and how deeply flawed her character is. You also have this scene where Oliver is in a cafe and he's just excluded from a group of guys because he he isn't wearing a hat. Jesus Christ, man. Th th this looks like a wow meeting at this point. Like, like I, I like how low we've stooped. Excuse me, can I borrow your pepper grinder? I can see you have two and I don't have any at the table that I'm eating at all alone. <laughs> Thank you. Oliver wants to borrow the hat so we can impress his group of newly made friends, but unfortunately, Harlow has a similar idea and has no plans of giving it up anytime soon. I want in. Well, it's too late. Hat and I have been bonding all day. I posted a picture of me wearing it and it's gotten more likes than I ever got in the post-park ball era. I'm gonna do for hats what Jessica Alba did for butt wipes. And besides, no take backs. <sighs> Honestly, I, I kind of understand Harlow. I, I, I took a picture with PewDiePie once and I haven't had the same amount of likes since. He was my yellow hat and I deeply wish that I had him back. Meanwhile, Liza is trying to hit on someone in an internet cafe and to the show's credit, again, it's a fairly decent gag. She's trying to get his attention, but he's way too busy checking his Dogecoin on Binance. Oh, huh. I'm so clumsy, it's endearing. <laughs> She returns to the apartment and realizes that everyone in the group is obsessed with this yellow hat because it's such a huge status symbol, leading Liza to make this very obscure joke. I was already having a terrible day and now you two go off and start a hat club and didn't even think to invite me? What am I? The Invisible Man from that movie I can't remember the name of? The Invisible Man? She means Eddie Redmayne. Yeah, uh, him. I honestly don't get the reference here at all. The only thing I found was a Google search for an article of Ready Med Eddie Redmayne asking people to stop emailing him. I want to be rich. <laughs> Liza then buys her own yellow hat to the dismay of Oliver and Harlow. Hey. No. Hell no. Yeah! What? I love just like, you know, imagining that they've set up this entire backdrop just for one of them to say no. It, that is the most productive waste of time or tax write-off that I've ever thought of. Liza then goes to a meeting and instantly falls in love with someone, defining the three qualities of living in Los Angeles. You have a certain mystique. What's your deal? My deal is that I like laptops and coffee and guys who like laptops and coffee i, I was gonna put in like an oblivion npc dialogue thing here but i, I think it's just i probably referenced that more than breaking bad at this point so we're gonna let that one slide meanwhile oliver gets friendly with a group of guys all wearing the same hat and if anything it looks more like a, a red dead 2 clan meetup <laughs> <laughs> looks like someone can't handle their sweet <laughs> Liza's date goes about as well as you can expect for a show with a 20 minute runtime per episode. But the twist is, as soon as the hat leaves her head, the guy loses all interest in her. It's kind of funny, you know, there's not really much else they could have done here. And it does ramp up that kind of aspect of liking someone for one particular trait. And once that trait's gone, you just have no interest for them anymore. May I kiss you? Sure. Hi. <laughs> when can I, uh... When can I see you again? Uh, um, yeah, I'm kind of busy these days. The group realized that they need to share the hat and can't all have it at the same time, so have a massive falling out. It's kind of like that thing they do in like kids animated films just before the third act, you know, when like everyone falls out and there's like a, a sad montage and then they just get back together five minutes later. Although due to time constraints, they don't even do that. There's no montage. They all just turn away from each other and then go on their phone probably to look at TikTok. Oliver invites his red dead posse and honestly, all of them wearing yellow, it, it just reminds me of Utopia again. The three eventually come to the compromise 
compromised that they need to timeshare the hat so everyone can get their use out of it. Harlow doing her photo shoot for Instagram likes, Oliver hitting on the guys for a possible date, and Liza getting it on with her date. And then as soon as the hat is removed, all of them become incredibly unlikable, like the hat has the biggest speech buff in human history. They eventually agree that the timeshare concept will never work, so they choose to throw the hat outside instead, which leads Dom, the manager, to come in with his own yellow hat. Okay, I didn't realize you were having a party that I was not invited to. And one thing I love about Dom's actor, I've, I've said this before, he steals the show. Any scene he's in, you can tell he's an actual professional comic actor. And this episode, it, it feels like it's shot like a Parks and Rec episode. Now, this is where the episode would end, right? The group put their differences aside, they move on, and everything goes back to exactly the way it was with nothing learned and nothing changed. Well. Not exactly, because we still have 10 minutes of runtime left. Don't answer that. So the show throws the curveball of Oliver, despite not having his hat, still being accepted by his Red Dead posse, proving once and for all the important argument that Red Dead 2 is the best game ever made. This also leads Liza to be more confident about herself not needing the hat to get a date, which then leads to this weird exchange where the guy apparently has a hat fetish. I mean, believe me, I know for a fact I will never be allowed to kink shame again in my entire life. I, I get that. But this just kind of comes out of nowhere. I don't see gender. I just see hats. I guess I never really needed the hat to be happy. And I never needed Dave, whom I will not judge, other than to say that his hat fetish is incredibly f***ed up. Wow. The episode concluding with Oliver being dumped and waking up next to a pig for some reason. And the gang realize that although they despise each other and they're perfectly imperfect, they can't afford rent anywhere else. So decide to stay together. How wholesome. That's, that's the face cam bit done, by the way. Enjoy seeing my face again in like two months time. <laughs> The next episode begins with Harlow and Liza clothes shopping, where Liza is instantly mistaken for a homeless person. Excuse me, you can't loiter here, Mr. Homeless Individual. I'm so sorry, Mr. Displaced Person, but here's a personal care bag. I feel like that could have been actual dialogue in like GTA 5 or something, you know, a satirical take on America. Just stop looking at me! Don't look at me! Say something! Oh, I wish you were dead, I really do! Mm. Oh my god, did I just indirectly compliment Liza's writing? Liza gets a tasket job. Yeah, re remember that? You know, the, the whole premise of the show? I, I, th I think it's literally in the name as well. But this time, it's at Esme, a wellness company. An obvious parody of Gwyneth Paltrow's Goop Company. What? If you don't know what that is, you may actually still have the chance of having a normal life. It's essentially a company that specializes in milking the top 1% of all their money with ridiculous products like a, a candle that smells like a vagina <coughs> that critical reviewed. The smell is definitely stronger. It's actually beginning to smell a bit putrid, which I would expect. I am about to start crying and run away. I mean, I get it. Honestly, I also respect it. It's much like Salt Bay. You know, wrapping your meat in gold tin foil isn't anything special, but if you can rinse millionaires out of their money, that is commendable. <gasps> oh my God. As we all know, rich people's tears are the tastiest. That's it. I drink your... <laughs> Liza's job this episode is being the replacement soul metabolizer, which sounds like a Dark Soul spell. And even she's confused as to what it is. I'm sure we'll find out and it'll be hilarious. Speaking of hilarious, Liza goes to sit on a yoga ball and doesn't know how to. This is actually so funny. It makes one of the actors break character and have a nervous breakdown because they laughed at the equivalent of a Family Guy cutaway gag. <laughs> oh my God, are you okay? <laughs> Did, did I do something wrong? The other girls start freaking out, unleashing their inner energy. It's played off like a gag, but the thing is, Liza's biggest claim to fame was doing exactly this on Vine, so it's hard to see this as a joke when half of Liza's gags are doing the human troll face in real life. Fuck. <laughs> The manager then wants Liza to be the brand representative and somehow sums up my entire opinion on the season so far. You are fascinating, Liza. I am? Yes. You're everything. And yet, nothing. The gang get back home obsessed with Esme's beauty products. Oliver, for example, has Esme on video. And you can tell that they've just edited the video in post because everything on the desk is blurred due to depth of field. But the video itself is in crisp 4K. Magnify that death sphere. 
Why is it still blurry? That's all the resolution we have. Making it bigger doesn't make it clearer. I'm Esme, and you're made of stuff. Meanwhile, Liza gets a promotion at Esme to brand ambassador. Keep in mind, she was the equivalent of the Uber driver for them. No idea how this happened. Personally approved by Esme to be our new brand ambassador. You are now the face of elbows. Wow, me? Mm -hmm. The group slowly start to get the downside of living a life on beauty products. Harlow is the most damaged, and honestly, this is actually a really good joke. I, I can't even meme on this one. I've been too busy savoring my shiitake mushroom essence. Oh, what, what are you doing? Eating. Honestly, Lisa, I've never felt better. Okay. The physical comedy is there. The timing, the acting, how she's completely oblivious and bought into the lie. Great job, woman that I'd know you for nothing else for. That you, you actually did a good job. They both walk in on Oliver, who's probably not as mentally unstable, but definitely wasting more of his day. I've gone from a quick seven-step zit removal to a solid 36-step Esme-approved routine. Like she said, if you don't have two hours twice a day to spend on your skincare, then you're not managing your time correctly. <laughs> Also, a small cutaway here. I, a lot of people have asked me for my skin routine. I, I'm not sure why you do that. First thing to do, get out of puberty as fast as you can. If that doesn't work, I'd recommend a face wash and a moisturizer. Here's, here's the ones I use. Fo focus. Please, Lord, focus. Uh, this one's just like foam. So you'd wet your face, cover your face in the foam, and then wash it off. And this one is uh, like a moisturizer, but it's got collagen in it because I, I, I hate moisturizers. This stuff is amazing. Uh, they're a bit pricey. There are probably cheaper alternatives. Why am I, why am I doing this cutaway in a video? Jesus Christ. Liza keeps moving up the ranks at Esme and is involved in photo shoots, including her elbows because they're so soft. Yep, apparently the gag is they only want her for her amazing elbows. She flexes them so much in photo shoots that the next day they've been totally locked out and she has to do menial tasks like brushing her teeth and getting dressed. Just like the last episode and pretty much every other episode in this entire show, the group realized their change has brought them nothing but misery, with Oliver now having an allergic reaction to his skincare and Harlow slowly going insane. Look at us. Guys, we're falling apart. I can't move my arms. Your skincare routine has blown up in your face, literally, and you're so delusional, you're talking to inanimate objects. I feel that was a dig at 2012 PewDiePie. Did, did, did no one catch on to that? <laughs> This is why I hate you! In honestly, a very weird turn and probable tax write-off for the show, they find a secret passage in the Esme offices into a back room and find out that Esme is just a guy in a mocap suit. I like as well how they obviously shouldn't be there and are trespassing, but all the staff are like, yeah, I'm, I'm an extra. I'm not paid enough to deal with this. He explains that this is all a giant scam to rinse women of their money by promoting fake wellness. And for what? Just to make money? Well, it's not all about the money. I mean, don't get me wrong. It's mostly about the money, but it's about more than that. About sending a message. Liza says she's going to expose him to the boardroom and he just lets her do it, banking on the fact that she won't be able to convince anyone. Standing in the same place as the mocap guy, but not wearing a mocap suit. I, I, I guess that was pointless. She's just a guy named Jeff pulling the strings and pretending to be her. She doesn't exist. Prepare for revolution! An old Soviet mosaic just randomly on the wall here in the Bibliotheca. Beautiful metaphor for releasing the ego. And our toxic relationship with food. I mean, we all do need to look beyond the fruit. The gag is all the women at the boardroom don't believe it and buy into the lie even more. Because God forbid anyone in a YouTube original show has any sort of character development. These episodes are actually so disconnected. It might, it might as well be a Black Mirror anthology. <laughs> The next episode begins with the group in quarantine, not because of the funny cough, but the timeless example of a citywide hair lice outbreak. Oliver and Harlow are trying to kill some time painting, and oh my lord, baby Jesus, this video contains a product placement. I'm so happy that Liza, a woman with a net worth of six million, is finally getting a sponsor. I just really hope it's Raid Shadow Legend. But first... Skinny Pat. What? 
So the sponsor for this episode is Skinny Popcorn. Not really something I'd understand to be in the Liza Koshi universe. You can't buy it in the UK. And I also love how any product promoting health seems to have collagen in it now. Ah, yes. I'm going to de-age my skin by eating 15 bags of popcorn every day. Liza still has to do a task at job despite the outbreak. So goes to deliver some food to a man's house. And I do have to put a disclaimer here. The man she's speaking to is uh, British. Hi, uh, I'm Liza, the tasker, here for Jude. That's me. And thank you so much for your service. New taskers are the real heroes. Oh, I'm still my job. Liza picks up his mail to see he works at GQ as a model. You know, the, the YouTube channel that does the 10 things people can't live without. My favorite one was with Fortnite Ninja because it was basically just a Red Bull shill. Liza instantly falls in love with the mysterious man because of his model job and generosity. Listen, I just want to say, in case we never see each other again, I, I think you're very attractive. Oh god, I am so sorry. That was so unprofessionally inappropriate. Please accept my deepest apologies. Boy, I'm quite sorry, love. I did not think it was a bit out of line there, governor. I have only had three hours of sleep reading my Tilly license agreement. Sam! Liza shares the news with Oliver, and he's very supportive, explaining to her that during times of great stress, people from different worlds can be brought together. She had just started dating this guy when they got thrust together during a national tragedy. Oh, wow. 9-11? I am not that old. No, I'm talking about when the Cats trailer came out. Oh. Mm -hmm. I love how even Liza On Demand is ribbing on Cats. The graphics, that's what this is all about. You know, if a show as safe as this is ribbing on a film, it's a massive L. Then Harlow walks in, who's recently shaved her head to avoid the head lice infestation. The group pretend to be supportive, which lasts about six seconds. Look at you! Okay, you're not helping. Okay, sweetie, I'm going to be very honest with you right now. You look... You look like a travel-sized version of The Rock. You look like a lady like Vin Diesel. The Vin Diesel one makes me laugh, not because the joke is funny, more because it reminded me of Vin Diesel being a thing. If any of you haven't seen, he does these interviews from time to time, and they are so cringe-inducing. He needs an award. God, you're so beautiful. God, she's so beautiful. <laughs> Am I right or wrong? Look at her. Mm, that smell. Darkness. Liza's mystery caller asks her to bring some flowers to the house, admitting that he didn't need them and he only bought them so he could see her again. It's a bit rushed, but again, Black Mirror logic, guys. We're, we're working on limited time here. So many things I wish we could do together. Go visit the pier, go get sushi. I even had tickets to Uncut Gems the musical before they had to cancel the show. No way! I had tickets to that show. He asks Liza to come round to the side of the house so they can see each other face to face. With a reveal so forced and music so falsely happy, you might as well have added a TLC logo at the bottom. This is the alternate universe where No Neck Ed was a chad. Back at the house, Oliver dresses up Harlow to look like Aang from Avatar The Last Airbender. I'm not even sure if I'm allowed to laugh at this joke. Actually, let, let me go ask Twitter. I'll, I'll get back to you in one to two weeks. We have a quick montage of Harlow constantly trying to remove Oliver's hair and failing miserably, while Liza deepens her relationship with Jude, the man she met through Tasket. Kind of a mid-montage, but to the show's credit, this is the first one in quite a while, and it does have this one great line. I trained myself to go without sleep for three days. I watched all eight seasons of Homeland in one weekend. Great joke because I, an e-celeb, know exactly how it feels to go three days without sleep at a time. I mean, have you seen the bags under my eyes? After the montage, quarantine gets lifted, and as a YouTuber, this joke is way too personal. Oh my god, it's over! The quarantine is lifted! It's freedom, it's sweet freedom! Oh my god, so what do we do first? <laughs> This is actually the best episode so far. We've had like three jokes that have actually landed. Like th this is a Guinness World Record or something, surely. Liza returns to Jude's house, worried that now quarantine is over, he'll lose all interest knowing that there's other girls that he can start talking to. But lucky for her, he has no idea as he's been too busy writing letters for orphans. So she keeps the lie going by not telling him everyone can leave the house now. So it's safe to assume for convenience, this guy never ever looks out the window, you know, to see all the people 
day walking. We then cut to Harlow, who for some reason is having a dream that she's in a news report regarding her being patient zero of the lice outbreak. I wouldn't have really included this bit in the video at all because it's so pointless and it doesn't go anywhere, but how left field this news anchor's joke is, it, it kills me. And this time we've traced it back to patient zero, this woman. Look at her. She looks like Stanley Tucci. <laughs> or that time I drew a face on my penis. I still can't believe you didn't get fired for that. It's like they hired two people off Fiverr and said, okay, be funny. Here's $10. Liza meets with Jude again and is trying to keep the lie going by lying about anyone being outside. Doing the loud equals funny bit when an ice cream truck passes by. People or cars, planes, but there's this cloud and it looks like Peppa Pig, but her legs are longer and she's wearing a hat and it looks like an Abraham Lincoln hat, but it's rounded at the top and a uh, sequence and that's it. It's just a normal looking cloud. It's not very good. If anything, it just reminds me of PewDiePie playing Amnesia. Jude then invites Liza in. And to be fair, it's meant to be a cul-de-sac. So it makes sense why the street's quiet. Only two seconds later, the street is then packed with people. Maybe they all just spawned in when both of them looked away. I, I have no idea. But Jude isn't happy that he's been duped and breaks it off with Liza. How could I possibly ever trust you again? I'm sorry. Goodbye. I'd feel sorry for Liza, but she did basically lie to the guy. And also, I'm not sure why, the, the background looks like every backdrop in a Darman video. Never gaslight your friends, because that is so uncool. Remember to like and subscribe. We've got about uh, five minutes of runtime left, so Jude comes back, sure, doing a complete 180, saying that they were made for each other, and he doesn't mind that she lied, but then finds out that she has lice, and when she goes to shave her head, he instantly loses all attraction and leaves. This is just the yellow hat bit again. Just because you put an episode in between the two doesn't mean you can reuse the same format again. It sucks as well, because this episode was probably the most engaging for me, but again, ruined by reusing the same joke. Dude, what if I told you that we could do all of that right now? No, I'm out. Are you crazy? He did the same joke about three times already. I don't think it's funny anymore. The penultimate episode starts with Oliver showing Harlow his weekly shop of ready meals that are named after celebrities. And that's the entire joke. That's it. Laugh now, please. Meal lineals. I don't get it. Frozen meals for millennials. They were going crazy for them in the store. Megan the Scallion pancakes, Doja Catfish, <laughs> Chili Eilish, Cardi Beef and Broccoli, and then for dessert, Millie Bobby Brownies. <laughs> That's funny. I like how Harlow does that laugh that anyone does when they clearly don't care about the conversation and just want it to be over. It's kind of like that thing that YouTubers do when they watch their friends' videos in a Discord call. The setting for this episode is the group opening mail to see that all their old friends are getting married, putting them in this awkward spot because they're all still single and living as roommates. Honestly, with housing prices as they are, most kids are probably going to be living with their parents until 30, so this episode will probably be socially acceptable this time next year. It means our 20s are over. What? How are our 20s over? No, no. I have five years left. Liza, it's the beginning of the end. Yeah. This is actually a genius bit because I think everyone in their 20s uses this cope. I'm not 24. I'm 20 plus three years. Also, uh, I I'm going to sound like a psychopath. Does anyone do that thing where they look up celebrities that are slightly older than them and think that they have like that amount of year difference to sort their life out? No, all right. Uh, yep, I'm a, I'm a psychopath. We cut to a month later, which removes all the filler and jumps straight to before the friend's wedding. With Harlow, Oliver, and Liza all in maximum cope, doing pointless things and tricking themselves into thinking it helps advance their life. I, um, got engaged! <gasps> to who? To him! Ah, choo, 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 choo. <laughs> if this guy looks familiar, he was in episode four of the first season of the show. He was some random that Harlow briefly dated, and he's like a white Eminem, if that makes sense. But now he's changed from quirky rapping white man to someone who respects all women. How brave. Can you believe I'm finally locking down this fine little piece of 
strong, independent female? Mm. I've been taking sensitivity training in preparation for my upcoming book tour. <laughs> Not bad, right? God, why, 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 why do all these side characters need to do like a complete 180 with their original traits? Like, nothing feels the same anymore. But I'm seeing things a lot more clearly now. I wish things were different. But it weren't us who changed. This sends Liza into a panic because the worst thing anyone can ever experience is something good happening to someone that isn't you. So she tries to stop them from leaving by buying a bunch of donuts that no one else wants. Sweet and filled with custard. You want one? I wish, but I have to save all of my calories for Betty. <laughs> <laughs> to make matters worse, Liza's apartment is now for sale because the landlord knows that she can't afford to pay rent on her own without Harlow and Oliver. Yeah, I mean, since, you know, Harlow and Oliver, they're going to be moving out. I figure you're going to be leaving too. Oh, unless you can pay for this place all by yourself. <laughs> I'm joking, of course. Maybe you should try getting a job. As a last ditch attempt, Liza tries to distract Harlow and Oliver so much, it puts their entire life on hold. So they see no point in going on with their future plans and they all just go back as roommates. But this doesn't work. As Oliver explains, he has a house letting and Harlow just pretends to be on her phone for some reason. Liza tries to take the group back to their original roots via buying a rundown car and taking them camping in the countryside. Once you get those shoes off and walk through the grass barefoot, you'll never want to go back to the city. Oh, I don't do barefoot. There are spies everywhere waiting to put these pretty little slabs on Wikifeet. I actually had no idea Wikifeet was a website. I, I, I mean, I've heard of it. I'm just amazed that as a complete degenerate, I never knew that that website was actually real. Didn't the website say private bathroom? Maybe they mean private as in it's inside. Oh, check it out. That's why they call it European style. Cause everybody can see European. Huh. I like how painfully long Liza holds her face on for that joke. Liza then goes back to reception to pick up more alcohol, finding out all the alcohol is made by the woman stamping on the grapes. That is two foot fetish jokes in the span of five minutes. Who is the writer for this show? Who, who snuck this guy in? Right, um, There's even a bit straight after where Oliver is shown putting his feet on the ground. And to top off the episode with probably the most 2012 smosh tear joke yet, they all stuff their mouths with marshmallows and try to speak. You could just add like a vine watermark border around this scene and it would feel right at home. Bars, homie. Alternatively, you could label this entire scene YouTube having a team meeting explaining why they have to hide public dislikes. They all realize that they're better off together and growing up as fully functioning adults is way too scary for them. So pretty much like every other episode, nothing else changes and the group are no different from when they left off. Check out the back. <gasps> oh my God. <laughs> The final episode, strangely enough, starts with a recap of the previous episode. Previously on The Walking Dead. So this is technically a two-parter. Strange because no Liza episode has continuity apart from season one ending with Liza getting the elite task it status. But at the start of this episode, Harlow and Oliver still actually want to go to the friend's wedding. Wait, this is character development in Liza On Demand? For once, an episode that doesn't end in collective retrograde amnesia? Liza is still trying to delay the others from going to the wedding and she makes this really weird analogy to smoking yeah i said it you're the smoky bear of friends smoky doesn't set fires he prevents them that doesn't make any sense his name is smoky because he's always smoking cigarettes in the forest and burning them down <laughs> after that joke uh, i think it was a joke liza tries to get her car started by a mechanic named lance for some reason it just reminds me of lance vance from vice city this is a last dance for lance vance. <laughs> meanwhile oliver and harlow are getting ready for the wedding but oliver tries to suck up to harlow hoping that when she gets married he'll be put as the best man right by your side the wind beneath your wings Liza is at the truck station with Lance, thinking of a way to write a wedding speech so she can crash the party. Kind of like that one Black Mirror episode with the funny ratings, but with about a tenth of the budget. Which leads to this very odd joke. May I suggest a quote? Maybe from a song. That's a nice idea. 
What's that, cross stitch? Yeah, it helps pass the time. Plus, it keeps me calm. Was the joke that he has like repressed anger or something? It's almost like Liza herself had no idea how to respond to that joke. Just this awkward pose like he's gonna kill her or something. We cut back to Oliver and Harlow, the former kissing so much ass that in the space of 30 seconds has already pretty much brainwashed Harlow into thinking he's perfect to be her best man. Oh, you're out of spa water. You know how grumpy your skin gets when you're dehydrated. Here, let me. Oh, you know me so well. Thanks. Now, I'm not gonna lie here, for, for a finale, this episode kind of sucks. You can tell throughout the series, there's been a huge budget cut as pretty much all episodes from season one and two had these outdoor locations with loads of extras. But for the most part, it's been Harlow, Oliver and Liza inside the apartment. And this episode, unfortunately, is probably the weakest. I'd go through it step by step like the other episodes, but they're just there's nothing of substance here for the first and second act. Oliver tries to get Harlow to pick him as the best man by kissing up to her about five times, but he's always cut short when she remembers someone else. Liza has to put up with Lance having some weird obsession with One Direction and wanting to kidnap them and reunite them because they all split off from each other years ago. I don't mind these ideas, it's just they repeat the same joke over and over with the same punchline. That sounds like a you problem. Eventually, Liza does turn up to the wedding, but it's already over. How convenient by not having to pay for more than three extras. Liza is quickly followed by Harlow and Oliver, only coming because they were both baited by Liza with promises of like free bags and stuff. She does a big speech in front of them, which feels like every stand speech in South Park. Look, oh, you're going to have the best time in Paris. And I can't wait to visit you. And I'm so happy that you and Luke are getting married. Harlow, you're going to be the most beautiful bride. So let's raise a glass to endings and new beginnings. The speech check works with Harlow and Oliver apologizing for wanting to leave Liza. Harlow still wants to get married, but now wants Oliver as best man and Liza as the maid of honor, which honestly, I kind of respect. This isn't just an episode that writes off everything as a joke where, you know, everything goes back to normal. This is actually the group moving on with Liza staying in the apartment on her own with Harlow and Oliver still helping to pay for her rent. Come here. <laughs> no! no! I'm not sure if there will be a season four. Any sites I used to confirm it were labeled as pending or unconfirmed. So bullshit. The show isn't necessarily canceled as of yet. For a send off, this is incredibly mediocre, but it's the opening to a new format. I'm totally down for it. Also, I respect the uh, Breaking Bad reference at the end. I also can't believe you made these in an air fryer. I can't believe we have an air fryer. Clearly, you don't own an air fryer. The season concludes with Liza, Oliver, and Harlow now all working for Tasket to make ends meet in the short term. I just really hope they don't do the exact thing that they do in all the other seasons where, like, it looks like there's going to be a big change, but everything goes back to normal. I mean, they, 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 they wouldn't do that. I found this season to be kind of disappointing. It's definitely the weakest one so far. There's just not a lot of substance here. And the whole theme of Tasket seems to be just thrown out the window until the very end. My main defense of season two was how, even though it wasn't as good as the first, it's harder to catch lightning in a bottle twice, especially when people know how your show's format works. But this felt a lot more rushed. I mean, there was a lot less budget, obviously, going from 10 episodes to seven. And I'm sure there were loads of other constraints like the funny cough and that wouldn't have helped and i do want to say these are people who genuinely seem to enjoy what they do this isn't just a cheap cash grab for them that's why liza uploaded a video titled dear foot fetishizers where she dips her feet in jam to make a sandwich <laughs> in conclusion this could be the end of liza on demand and as much as i'll miss it and all the teslas it's helped pay for there was no puke joke this season <laughs> Zero out of ten.